Alright, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Kamadash. That's all praise to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give praise and glory unto the Yahweh Kamadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Akim, while Akwas, that you brothers and sisters make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who tells the truth and who rule well. And, um, <clears throat> you know, tonight just want to just briefly touch into, you know, the importance of, uh, you know, getting our minds ready, you know, for the great shaking, you know, that Yahweh Shemal Shah, you know, is about to do, you know, here upon planet Earth, you know, as it's prophesied here in the book of uh, Haggai. Right, because Yahweh Shema Shah is, um, man, he's coming with some times that, pursuant to Daniel 12 and 1, has never been seen before since there's a nation. And, you know, we've got to prepare our minds, you know, for, you know, what it is that the Lord has planned. And we have the luxury of getting the inside scoop, you know, of, of, the, of the type of uh, uh, chaos that the Lord is going to bring, man. The type of judgment that the Lord is going to bring. You know, so as the book of Second Peter, the third chapter says, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation, meaning your conduct? You know, how should you be conducting yourself? You know, should you be conducting yourself, you know, like the masses of the people? You know, although the Lord is scourging this place, you know, with 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 uh, uh, deaths, you know, mass shooting just to, just today, you know, here on Sunday. What's the day? Is that I want to say the 15th you know, of May, you know, the Lord. Had two more mass shootings, you know, on top of the one that happened yesterday, you know, that Edomite going into that grocery market and shooting up those jakes, like 10 jakes, man. You know, so we need to be preparing our minds for the straight gate that Yahweh Shah will put us through. You know, if you profess to be an Israelite, well, no matter if you profess, profess it or not, you know, scripture says in 2nd and 7th chapter that the whole world is about to be put in straights, man. Revelation 3 and 10. He says that he's about to try the whole world with the hour of temptation. So the only but the only difference is that the elect, they're going to have faith through it all. And that faith is what's going to uh, pretty much allow them to inherit that uh, that city that was built it and prepared and filled, filled with all good things, as the book of second and seven chapter says. But nonetheless, man, let's grab this in the book of Haggai, the second chapter. And uh, verse six, it says. For thus saith Yahweh Bashamah Shah a host, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Yeah, you can read this in 2 Peter 3, Isaiah 24. Right, all throughout scripture. And how's the Lord gonna shake this place, man? Well, he's shaking it now, you know, with these particular skirmishes and uprising and seditions and tumults, you know, and people being distressed in the mind. And he's going to finish it off with that great shaking, you know, with his appearance, with his appearance, man. You know, Matthew, the 13th chapter. Right. So like you mark the 13th chapter. So he says, um, and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, says Yahweh Shah. And what house is he speaking about? The house of David, man. Right. But. I want to uh, get this also again here in Hebrews. Hebrews reiterates this. I'm going to grab it in the NLT version. All right, this is Hebrews chapter 12. In verse, uh, as a matter of fact, we can start up here at verse 22. Hebrews 12 and 22 in the NLT says, No, you have come to Mount Zion. It says, You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living power. The heavenly Jerusalem. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it starts right here with us being in this truth. Right? The Lord, you know, has a, which Mount Zion, which is, uh, that's where the house of David is, man. So, if, you know, if you're in this truth and sincerity, the Lord has, has put us here in Mount Zion, man. Heart to Zion. And, you know, Lord willing, Yahweh, you know, Ratazah, you know, he keeps us here. So he says, and to the countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering, you have come to the assembly of the most highest firstborn children. And who is that? The elect, man. You know, because we're gathering around the elect. Now, we all pray and hope that we're a part of the elect. 
all right but while we're amongst these particular you know brothers you know and sisters man you're looking at you know some of the very elect and you know once again you could very well be it you know and the lord gathered the elect how by the word as is written in baruch the fifth chapter and baruch the fourth chapter right it says you have come to the assembly of the most high's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven what does that mean your name is written in heaven does it mean that he got your your actual hebrew name written <laughs> on a cloud no speaking about your name is written down in the lamb's book of life man as it's spoken about in um luke i want to say uh chapter 10 or chapter 12 right? as well as revelation 13 and revelation the 20th chapter man right if you're part of that number you're you're known in the heavens man you know and that's a heavy thing because the lord man two-thirds of our people right the lord he, he they're out of his sight he's not even thinking about them <laughs> you know what did he tell what did, what did the angel tell uh the prophet daniel when the angel came unto daniel uh, you know about to give him those revelations he says for you are greatly beloved in heaven man he told the prophet daniel you are greatly beloved in heaven i might i might have to do a lesson on that man that's i'm just thinking about that man that's heavy you know i want to be known in heaven you know when, when you know if i was to see an angel in jacob's trouble or whatever hey hey you're known hey hey you good you're beloved in heaven we're going to take care of man listen man that's what we want you know but it starts with us getting our face solidified because the lord about to shake the hell about this place man you know we hey, we're gonna be seeing the same things these wicked doers gonna be seeing you know we're gonna be a hey, david says in psalms 91 a thousand shall fall at thy left hand and ten thousand at thy right hand man we're gonna be surrounded by all types of judgments man we're gonna be seeing it you know but you can't be shaking man you know you can't be hey, you gotta have the mindset as Yahweh Bashmal Shah, he's a man of war, you know. So you gotta have a, a a a valiant mindset, you know. When you go into that word valiant, as a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. First uh, Maccabees chapter two. Bear with me one second, and this will tie perfectly into the lesson. Yep, this is the book of 1st Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 64 It says, wherefore ye my sons, right, <laughs> the elect He says, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law For by it you shall obtain glory Yeah, that's right We got to show ourselves men, man, you know, and be valiant You know, not men according to the standards of this world No, but but, but by men, you know, according to the standards of Yahweh Bashmah Shah and, our, and show ourselves valiant, you know, on the behalf, you know, of keeping the Lord's commandments unto death if it calls for it, man. All right, what he tells us in Sirach 4 and 28, he says, strive unto death, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee, man. All right? Now, I want to go to this word valiant real quick. He says, wherefore ye, my sons, be valiant and show yourselves as men. Valiant. He says, uh, brave, courageous intrepid right in danger yeah and that's that word i wanted to go into intrepid intrepid in danger because the lord's about to put us in dangerous situations man like david man david was in dangerous situations but the lord delivered him from them all right just because you know you know you're an israelite <laughs> and you hold camp or you know you say you believe that don't mean the lord not gonna put you in dangerous predicaments man you're not immune to that you know, but the Lord will save you from it if you're part of that number. Right? So intrepid in danger is what? That word intrepid means what? Fearless, undaunted, unafraid, unalarmed, unflinching. Yeah, you ain't <laughs> folding up like a little bitch, man. You know? Now, of course, in the flesh, you know, that first reaction in the flesh, like, oh, shit, you know? But that's why uh, we got to be walking in the spirit, judging everything that's happened upon planet earth by the spirit not by the flesh you know when you see these particular mass shootings hey because one day you may be in a fucking walmart to where hey instead of hey you watching a video that was uh, uh far uh, away on the other end of the country of a mass shooting no you may be in that soup in that store in that store today and there's a mass shooting 
Now, in the flesh, you may be shaken up, but in the spirit, you got to judge it. Like, okay, this is the Lord, man. This is the Lord. And this is why we speak about the sovereignty and the and, and the om, omnipotence of Yahweh Shema Omnipotence means all-powerful, meaning that he controls every, situ every situation. So when you're in particular, uh, particular uh, situations, right, such as that, you know, whatever it may be, you know, mass shooting or uh, uh, earthquake, whatever, right? Understand, you got to understand, you got to walk in the spirit like, all right, this is Yahweh Shema Shah, and I believe he's going to keep me safe from this. Instead of reacting in the flesh, trying to figure out carnal ways how to get away from it, you know, you, you're afraid. And then, hey, what does the book of uh, Sirach, Sirach say? Sirach chapter 2. Sirach chapter 2. And verse... Uh, 12 woe meaning destruction be to fearful hearts meaning fearful minds yeah, if you got a fearful mind man in these times hey <laughs> stay away from the camp you know that's a commandment in deuteronomy the 20th chapter when we're to go out to war and you had a particular man he was afraid to go to war hey it was a commandment you make that man turn the fuck around and go back home because fear is a very uh contagious thing it says woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways means that you're unstable. <laughs> you don't know which side of the fence you want to get on. Right? You're going in two ways. It says, verse 13, Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, meaning faint-minded. Your mind is weak, for he believeth not. That's that's at the root of it. The reason why people are faint-hearted, they're, they're weak in the minds because they don't believe, man. See? Now, now all these lessons about faith, you know, that the apostles and elders and, and particular brothers have been going into you know, all these years, it's going to start, it's going to make sense now, you know, now you see why the spirit had faith videos to be pumped out, see these, these particular faith videos that people would just pass over, you know, and uh, click on the, click on Sakari cutting the Christians, or Wi-Fi cutting, you know, bloody mess in the street, hey, hey, listen, man, hey, don't, don't take these particular lessons for granted, you know, because your faith is what's going, this is how we're going to be saved, man, Ephesians 2 and 8, for you are saved by grace through faith, man. Your faith is what's going to see you through, right? And that's what the Lord is beholding. That's what he's looking at upon planet Earth, right? Luke, the 18th chapter, Yahweh says what? When I come, shall I find faith on the earth? See? Because <laughs> the Lord about to shake this place up so hard, he's going to shake the, the so-called faith that's in these people, man. All these Christians that's professing that they, they believe, they gun-ho Christian, they show up to choir rehearsal three times a week, you know? Hey, they've been a part of the prayer committed for 25 years. Listen, man, the first sight of the Lord's judgment, like heavy judgment, man, they, all them years of Christianity is just gone out the window, man. See? And that's how cold Yahweh Shemal Shai is, man. See? But see, we got the inside scoop about his true nature, his true purpose, you know, his true intentions upon this place. And it's not a good thing, man. We're trying to do our best, you know, you know, to stay rooted and grounded. So, it says, woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. So the Lord's not going to defend you, man, if you doubt in him. You know? It's just like a man and his wife. You know, man, hey, his wife in trouble. Hey, he expects his wife. Hey, baby, you better have faith in me. If you don't, man, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, that's, that's how the Lord going to be with us, man. Hey, we got to have faith in him. You know? Got to have faith in him, man. So... Hebrews 12, going back, Hebrews 12, I'm going to finish that out in verse 22 and get down to the point. It says, now you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living power, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of, thousands of angels in the joyful gathering. You have come to the assembly of the Most High's firstborn children, whose names are written in heaven. Yeah, you got to believe that too. Although we, we pray that we're part of the hope for the elect, you actually have to believe that you're part of them. You know, you know in, in, in humility, you know, you got to be humble about it, you know. But you got to believe. Yeah, I, I believe. Hey, man, shoot for the stars, bro. I believe I'm part of the 144,000. Now, I hope, you know, I believe it. That's the, that's the thing. You, you have faith in that. You don't know for sure, but I believe it, <laughs> you know. I'm going to hope for it. Right? And that's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants you to hope for that, man. 
right? When you was in the world, you had hopes for all these vain ass things. Hope to be a damn NBA, you know, uh, uh, basketball star, you know, an NFL player. You, you shot for the stars then. Yeah, so shoot for the stars now. And the Lord, hey, you been in this truth. Hey, that's, man, that's the, man, <laughs> that's why you can't downplay us having this particular knowledge that we got. The Lord has given us, by him giving us this truth, he's given us the hope, to hope in the, in, 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 uh, in being saved. You know? And it says, you have come to the assembly of the Most High's firstborn children, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to the Most High himself, who is judge over all things. You And see, he's a judge over all things. So when we see these particular judgments, you got to have faith. He's the judge. He's, 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 he's the one carrying forth these particular judgments. Man, he says, you have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven who have now been made perfect. Yeah, the elect. Now, I'm going to skip down here to verse 26 to get down to the point. When the Most High spake from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Uh, he says, once, once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. And what, what is that speaking about the heavens? Uh, well, there's actually going to be war in heaven, as it says in uh, Revelation 12. We're talking about war in the sky between Esau and his chariots and the Lord and his chariots, which is going to be a total onslaught. And also, you know, that war in heavens is speaking about Esau being put out of power. All right. Because you being in rulership is considered as classified as you being in heaven. Right, meaning a, a high place, a high place of authority. Something the Lord's about to shake that. Right? So along with Esau being shaken. Oh, what does he say in Jeremiah 50? Let's get that real quick. <laughs> About Babylon. Jeremiah chapter 50. And verse 22. A sound of battle is in the land. And we see that. And of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken how is babylon become a desolation among the nations so babylon is known as the hammer of the whole earth wherever this place wherever the united states go it hammer it crushes wherever it goes man so you don't think when the lord breaks such a mighty empire such as this you're not going to feel the effects of it of course you will man and this is why faith is going to be required because this, this, with this system being broken, you're gonna feel it. Because our people are used to living off of this system, man. You know, going to this place with, uh, uh, for your food, for your water, for your education, for your religion, for everything. That's part of the curses. You shall go to your enemy for in want of all things. So with the Lord breaking this man, put him down to a low peasant position, right? With us going to that transition. Or to that great reset this is the true great reset it's going to require faith man right so let's keep going it says when the most high spake, spoke from mount sinai his voice shook the earth but now he makes another promise once again i will shake not only the earth but the heavens also this means that all of creation will be shaken it says all of creation will be shaken that's including you man everybody's going to feel this says all the creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain and what are those unshakable things the elect the elect are the unshakable things they're going to be unswerved they're going to be persistent in their uh in their deliberate uh, uh purpose to go into the kingdom man all right verse 28 since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable right let us be thankful and please the most high by worshiping him with holy fear and awe for our power is a devouring fire that's right man i want to go into this word unshakable real quick or shakable so like it's shakable uh that's not what i want yep unshaken mid 15th century not agitated see not agitated these particular things that's about to come man and you gotta you gotta take this shit on the chin and keep moving you know you can't be agitated by these particular things that's happening man and we see esau about to move in like a flood man you know i was watching this video earlier and even the the uh, apostle 
Apostle uh, Ramlob had did a video about it earlier tonight about that dude, uh, uh, Noah, uh, Yari, Yari, Yari Noah. He's like the chief executive uh, uh, for Klaus Schwab, you know. And man, this man is he's, he's talking stout and they ready to bring it. They ready to bring this NWO and they ready to starve out humanity. They ready to turn humanity into a damn cyborg, you know. And this is all a part of, you know, the script. But we gotta be unshaken. We can't be agitated by this, man. What did David tell us in Psalms 37? Psalms 37. In verse 1. In Psalm of David, fret not thyself because of evildoers. <laughs> so don't be agitated because of these people, man. We know the plan. Now, of course, once again, in the flesh, like, damn, man. Like, Lord, stop him. And we know he will. And we gotta, we gotta keep putting up this curse up on these people. You gotta keep, you know, stop. But you can't be agitated to the point to where you're out of your faith. You know, you done lost your mind. So David says, "Fret not thyself because of evildoers; neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb." So let's go back. Unshaken, not agitated. Meaning. Yeah, you're planted. You have deep roots. And this is what the grace period was set up for, man. For us to get deep, deeply rooted in this truth. So when the Lord does shake this place, hey, we're not going to be rooted out. You know, we're going to be like the wise men who built our house upon that rock. As Yahweh Shah said in Matthew the seventh chapter. You know. But um, yeah, man, that's pretty much it on that. I had a you know a few more scriptures in mind I want to bring out, but I think that drove the point home. You know, Lord willing. Hey, you brothers and sisters, hey, hey, stay rooted, you know, get rooted even more. I'm speaking to myself as well, because, uh, hey, we, back, we all finna feel this shaking, man. But so with that, hope you're edified to next time. I, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem Kapadash, DTA, Baba Ball, Kwame Shalom, Shalom.